Hello everyone. In this video, I shall be discussing about non-invasive ventilation in newborn. And uh, these are the practical aspects related to this workshop. As we all know that the preterm has a very fragile brain, a uh, very fragile uh, lungs. And even a single mechanical breath would lead to uh, damage of the alveoli. And that is why this is the era when we are moving from invasive to non-invasive. So non-invasive ventilation is basically a kind of respiratory support where the support is given without the need of ET intubations through an interface kind of a nasal prong or mask. We can broadly categorize um, non-invasive ventilation in two categories. One is uh, constant pressure and another one is a variable. Constant pressure is CPAP and HHFNC, while the variable pressures are the NIPPV, BiPAP, and nasal high frequency. So let's see what is the difference in this variable um, pressure device, like variable pressure modes, that is BiPAP, NIPPV, and the nasal high frequency. In case of BiPAP, it's kind of a CPAP only, but there are two levels of P, and um, there is a very short delta P. This is the level one, and this is the second level of PEEP. And the second level of PEEP is given for the longer eye time. So two levels of PEEP with the longer eye time. And the effect is mainly like a CPAP. While nasal uh, IPPV or um, intermittent positive pressure ventilation or nasal high frequency, it's basically kind of a mechanical uh, ventilation, but without the intubation, without the need of the ET tube given by the nasal um, interface. So let's discuss a case scenario where 26 week 750 gram female child was intubated after delivery in a delivery room and the baby received a surfactant and mechanical ventilation for four days. After that, the child was extubated to CPAP with a PEEP of six and FIO to 25 percentage. But 18 hours later, the child FIO to need increased to 50 percentage. We put the child on the PEEP of six but still the sets were 88 percentage. The distress was increased and there were three episodes of apnea in one hour and AVG started worsening. So now, how shall we manage this child? Shall we intubate this child and put again on the mechanical ventilator? Shall we increase the PEEP to seven and FIR to, to 16? Or shall we shift the child on NIPPV or any other option? Let's look at the evidence. And this is the study where we, uh, this is a meta-analysis and uh, where they have compared the nasal um, intermittent positive pressure ventilations versus nasal CPAP. And this is a line of null effect. And here we can see that this favors NIPPV. That means that NIPPV reduces the incidence of the extubation failure and need for re-intubations within 48 hours to one week more effectively than the nasal CPAP. And this is the second study. What we are basically worried about while putting the child in CPAP is the gastrointestinal side effect. We can see in the study that NIPPV does not increase the gastrointestinal side effects. So this child can be shifted to NIPPV. In fact, could have been shifted after extubation to NIPPV. But can we shift this child on the same ventilator in which the child was initially? The child was on the SLE 5000. Well, SLE 5000 you may, but here what NIPPV, that is, a, that is not the ideal mode. It has a non-synchronized NIPPV. The synchronization is important in delivering effective NIPPV because in non-synchronized, hardly 20% of the breaths are being synchronized and can achieve the effective tidal volume. So to deliver a proper NIPPV, you need a synchronization to be done and proper device. Now, how can we achieve this synchronization? So what is uh, synchronization? So this cartoon depicts the uh, red breaths and these are the spontaneous breaths and the breaths which have been um, which have been shown, which have been shown in this purple uh, thing is purple color is the venti breath. So when the child is inspiring at that time, the venti is in the exhalation phase. Similarly, when patient is in the exhalation phase, at that time, the venti is in the inspiration phase. The eye time is still going on. So ultimately, end result is asynchrony. So how can we avoid this? So we want to initiate positive pressure breaths 
at the same time when patient starts the continuous breathing. So we need to have some sensing device which sends the patient's breath, can give the signal to Venti, and Venti would initiate the positive pressure breath. So what is this sensing device and what kind of, what types of the sensors are there? So first is the flow trigger sensors. What is it? Flow sensors are attached at the proximal end and this is the device which can detect the change in the flow and can, this change in the flow has been, um, has been uh, interpreted as uh, initiation of breath and the sense uh, signals are given to ventilator and then ventic sends this breath and deliver the breath. So what is the advantage? The flow can be measured, inspiratory tidal volume can be measured, and this is the most sensitive uh, method of uh, sensing and delivering the positive pressure breath. But disadvantage, the flow sensor or flow sensing and IPPV is not available in India. There are another disadvantage of leak, which has been um, detected and it has been triggered, but there are ways to manage the leak compensation as well. The second type of sensor is the abdominal uh, sensors, and that is the Gresby's capsules, where the patient is breathing. At that time, that there will be a distension of abdomen, and that has been detected, and that would lead to compression of the capsules. And with the compression of the capsule, the signals are uh, sensed and sent to the ventilator and breath is initiated. This is simple and inexpensive. It is not affected by leaks. But disadvantages, abdominal distension would also uh, decreases the sensitivity of um, this type of the device. And sensitivity depends upon the site of the placement too. The third type of the trigger is NAVA trigger. That is the naturally adjusted ventilation assist. And what is this? There is this kind of uh, catheter, the special catheter, which goes to patient's uh, esophagus and it senses the electrical activity of the diaphragm and those sensors are given to the ventilator. And that is how the breath is being initiated. This is a very sensitive method, but again, it's expensive. It is invasive and it cannot monitor the flow. The third type of the sensor is the pressure trigger sensors and this is widely being used in the India. Uh, here, the drop in the pressure in the circuit with the initiation of the breath has been sensed and breath is triggered. The sensor is at the distal end, that is at the venti end. And there is no special sensor to be attached, but it is less sensitive. Auto-triggering is the main issue with this. And again, the leaks can be appreciated at change in pressure and uh, breaths are sensed and auto-triggering happens. This is little less expensive and no special ventilators are needed. That is the main advantage of the same. Here we can see this is the screen of such kind of a pressure sensed NIPPV where we can see that this white breaths are uh, a venti breath and this blue breath is the trigger breath. And uh, the, there is some mechanism to control or compensate for the leak to certain levels in a couple of uh, ventilators available in the India. And let's see that how it works. Like there is here, I'm not supporting any brand. So this is the spontaneous breath and this has been sensed. And uh, so this has been seen in the blue color and now this guy is trying to generate the leak and even if there is a leak, there is no trigger breaths. The all breaths are white in color. These are not the trigger breaths. These are the set breaths which Venti is delivering. And as soon as he tries to yeah, initiate the breath, yeah, there is a sense breath. Like these are the trigger breaths, blue breaths. So now let's see if we don't have the uh, synchronized NIPPV, then can we use the non-synchronized one? So this is an article again, the meta-analysis, systemic review of meta-analysis, where they have compared the CPAP versus NIPPV and extubation failure. And this is a sub-analysis, subgroup analysis, where they have compared the synchronized as well as non-synchronized in a separate limb. And then 
here we can see that uh, even in the non synchronized one, it favors the NIPPV. The extubation failure is lesser, even if it's a non synchronized. So we may even start a non synchronized. It is better than at least a CPAP. And this is the second case scenario 27 week 800 gram male delivered by LSCS. The child cried immediately after birth. The respiratory rate was 70 per minute. There was a dis uh, retractions. There was a distress. And extra was suggestive of moderate IBS. Now, what kind of a respiratory support will you start with this child? We had seen one case scenario where post-extubation and we found that there the NIPP was useful. Now, what about primary mode? Shall we go for the same NIPPV and surfactant? Shall we start with the CPAP and surfactant without intubating the child? Shall we go for the surfactant and mechanical ventilator, intubate the child, give surfactant and mechanical ventilation? Or surfactant, ensure and put the child on HHFNC. So this is again um, Cochrane Database Systemic Review published in 2016, uh, where the 10 studies uh, were included and uh, Total 1,000 babies were included, and they concluded that early NIPPV does appear to be superior to nasal CPAP alone or for decreasing the respiratory failure and need for the intubation and endotracheal tube ventilation among the preterm infants with RDS. So rather than CPAP, it is better to start with the early NIPPV. And when we are discussing NIPPV, we shall not forget this, uh, we should not forget uh, the art, this article from our own India and the many names are familiar and are a friend or a senior. So here they have compared the efficacy of uh, various uh, modalities of non-invasive respiratory support as a primary respiratory support in preterm neonates with respiratory distress syndrome. This is a network analysis, network meta-analysis where they have compared the hypronasal cannula, CPAP, bilevel PAP, bilevel CPAP or BiPAP, and NIPPV. And the main outcome was the need of mechanical ventilation within seven days. They had included 70, 35 studies with 4,000 neonates. So that's a huge data, huge number of patients. And the results are NIPPV was more effective in decreasing the requirement of mechanical ventilation than CPAP. The treatment failure with both NIPPV and BiPAP was lesser compared to CPAP and HHFNC. The NIPPV was associated with reduced risk of air leaks. It has a lesser incidence of bronchopulmonary dysplasia or mortality when compared with the CPAP. And nasal injury was lesser with the HFNC compared to the CPAP. Those are the results. So conclusion is most effective primary mode for, for non-invasive respiratory support in preterm neonate with the RDS is NIPP. And this is the uh, another study from again the same author and where they have compared the NIV for post extubation respiratory support and they have included 33 studies again the around 4000 preterm neonates and they have compared seven non-invasive respiratory modalities including CPAP, constant flow, variable flow, HFNC, synchronized NIPPV and non-synchronized separately and BiPAP and nasal high frequency and what they concluded is Synchronized NIPPV might be the most effective modality and continuous flow CPAP is the least effective modality for preventing extubation failure in preterm neonates. So when we convince that NIPPV is the best and out of that the synchronized is the best, then when we think about starting it, how shall we start and what should be the settings? So when you are starting the NIPPV, what is differences you may require higher pressure compared to the routine mechanical ventilator because there is a leak. And second is you may require higher eye time, longer eye time because of the dead space. So time constant, what eye time, what we set is almost four to five times the time constant. That is eye time of 0.5. We set the PIP and PWP 20 by 6 and rate of 40. That is the starting and in case of a BPD kind of a situation, you may require to go up to even 30 to 38 of PIP and PEEP, even up to 10. So when we have started the child on NIPPV, how shall we be? 
so when you uh, when the child is stabilized you start weaning the fir2 and uh, wean fir2 up to 0.4 once you are at the fir2 of less than or equal to 0.4 your ph is more than 7.25 and co2 is less than 60 you should start weaning pip first followed by pwp and followed by respiratory rate when you reach up to the FIR2 of less than 0.3, PIP of less than 15, and PWP of around 5, and respiratory rate of 20, you can stop NIPPV and can shift to the nasal uh, CPAP. Okay, so now the, if in case you have a higher CO2, uh, and if you want to wash the CO2 out, the system modality, nasal high frequency, which is very less commonly used, and it is still under... Uh, research and uh, yeah, many units are using, but uh, on, on, only if you are friendly in using it and you have a proper device, you may use it. And when you are using, you should set the frequency a bit on lower side, that is 8 to 10 hertz. And I time of um, uh, longer I time, that is I ratio 1 to 2 or 1 to 1 to wash out the CO2. The CO2 wash out would be better if you set the frequency with lower side. And here we can see that this is the frequency, uh, this is a high frequency vibrations can be seen in a spontaneous breathing rung. That is a, this is the lung simulator, test lung, the simulator, this is a spontaneously breathing test lung. I was not sure whether you could appreciate it or not, but with the spontaneous respiration, there was, along with that, there was a frequency. And here we could see that uh, the CO2 washing out was uh, <clears throat> better with the nasal high frequency. So sometimes you may use this uh, mod before intubating the child if you have a little higher CO2. So take home message here is NIPPV can be used as a primary mode for premature infants as well as the secondary mode after the extubating from the mechanical ventilation. In both the cases, NIPPV decreases the need of intubation and mechanical ventilation as well as BPD. Flow-driven synchronized NIPPV has a good sensitivity and can measure the flow as well. But it is expensive and it is not available. Both synchronized as well as non-synchronized NIPPV are better than CPAP in avoiding extubation failure. So now the indication to put the tube has changed after introduction of NIPPV and try using NIPPV uh, at least and Avoid putting the tube in. Thank you.